So welcome all to community chat number four. Uh, this is the community chat where we're going to focus on character design guidelines and the future land use map questionnaire as part of the Engage 2045 process. Um, thanks for joining tonight. This is the last and final community chat. Um, we do have some others recorded we'll tell you about here in just a moment. Um, but we're going to give you um, just a little bit of an overview um, of the project and um, what we're going to be doing tonight in this round three of engagement. Um, for those of you that are joining tonight, we wanted to um, let you know that one of the ways the county is um, going to show their appreciation for your commitment and your um, participation is to provide a $20 gift certificate to Carrot Tree. Um, so one of you hopefully has a sweet tooth and I hear the peanut butter chocolate cake is quite good. So you might wanna check that one out. Um, so that prize drawing will happen and you'll, your email address that was provided when you signed up for this will be used to, to let you know that you were a winner. Um, we're gonna have you muted for just a little while as we give you um, an overview of tonight and um, give you a little bit of information about the questionnaires that um, we're gonna be sharing with you. Um, before we do that, I wanted to do a short poll um, that will give us a sense of what brought you here tonight, what, what made you interested in signing up for this community chat. So if you could see, hopefully you see on your screen now, the first question there, what made you decide to participate today? And you can click all of the boxes that apply to you. So maybe you just learned about this process and you wanna learn more. Maybe you've been involved and you wanna keep your momentum. Um, maybe you're interested in the county's future or you have information um, that you want to learn about the questionnaires, or maybe you're just interested in talking to fellow residents about the important topics we're gonna be exploring tonight. So if you click all of the boxes that um, make sense for you, and then we'll see here in just a moment the results from this poll so we can see what folks are interested in. And while we're doing that, I'm going to introduce a couple of different folks that are um, on the call with us tonight. Um, my name is Lee Ann King. I'm with Clarion Associates. I'm one of the consultants working with this great crew of folks from James City County. Um, also on our team, actually the lead of our team is Brad, Vlad Gavrilovic. He is the principal with EPRPC. And our other um, co-facilitator tonight is Tammy Rosario, who's the Assistant Director of Planning and Community Development. So you'll see us um, several times throughout the evening. Um, you'll also see other great James City County um, planning staff with our wonderful historic Jamestown background here. Um, they will be helping to answer your questions and um, you know, help you in terms of filling out the questionnaires and any questions that you might have. Okay, so let's see here. Okay, very interested in the future of the county. That's excellent because that's very much what we're talking about in this process. So 88% of you interested in the future. About half of you are just learning about this. So that's excellent. We're really happy to have new folks join in the process. And we do have some folks that have been involved previously and want to cont continue that momentum. Also have some folks with questions about the questionnaire and good to see that some folks also want to um, talk to fellow residents about these topics. So thanks for doing that. We've got a couple of little polls that we'll be doing throughout the night here. I'm gonna give you um, a brief overview of um, the planning project and where we are in the process. So again, this Engage 2045 process is the um, effort to update James City County's long range comprehensive plan. Um, it's a document that will provide policy direction and implementation strategies to guide future, uh, the future of James City County. We launched this effort back in 2019. And as you can see here, there are five main project phases that we have used to organize the work over these um, several years. Um, there are also four main community engagement milestones. Um, the first one was um, back in 29, November of 2019 with the Summit on the Future. And that's where we focused on listening and envisioning and really get, getting some of the um, 
the foundational information from the community along with the 2019 citizen survey to understand what the key planning priorities were for the community. And so we had five planning priorities that came out of that effort. Um, exploring and testing was our second phase, and this aligns with the alternative futures phase, where we were looking at different growth alternatives for the community, getting reactions from um, folks through a series of online um, engagement tools to um, find out what people liked or didn't like about different alternative futures. And then we also um, asked folks to provide comment on the current comprehensive plan goals, which um, we're now using to um, consider the, the plan goals that will be included in the, the updated comprehensive plan. So now we're in phase three, deciding and affirming. And this is a really important phase. Each of these phases builds on the previous phase. So we establish our public input priorities in one. We learned about some of the kind of land use and um, related policy guidance and the comprehensive plan goals in two. And in three, we're really focusing a little bit more. We're drilling down a little further to get more direction on um, specific implementation ideas that we want to be including in the planning efforts. So we really appreciate you joining uh, tonight. Um, so round three, deciding and affirming has a two main components. One is a set of questionnaires, and this is really important because these three questionnaires that you see listed here are the main way that people are, excuse me, that we are collecting feedback from residents. So the policies and actions questionnaire, character design guidelines, and future land use map. We're going to be focusing on the two um, two bottom ones listed here tonight. Uh, we do encourage you to complete the third as well, all three. Um, the policies and actions questionnaire is possibly a little simpler, um, and it, it's definitely one that we would encourage you to take a look at, um, and we have community um, chat information about that one that you can um, watch if that is helpful to you. Um, so questionnaires are really important. The second component of round three are our community chats. Um, the, the meeting that we're having tonight, this is our final one. The opportunity with these chats is really um, for you all to join and ask questions of the project team on anything related to the policy topics that are being addressed in these three questionnaires so that you feel informed and ready to ask, answer those uh, questionnaires. Um, let me scroll to the next one here. There we go. Um, so again, three questionnaires. This is our sole way to provide feedback. So we're really going to, you're going to hear us several times tonight, encouraging you to go and log on to those questionnaires. They're all available on the project website. You can see that listed here and I'll show you how to navigate to that. They're all open through February 21st. So you've got some time to, um, to get those answers into us. Again, the community chats, this is really an open-ended opportunity to um, answer, get any questions that you have answered. We had two previous chats for the policies and actions questionnaire, uh, one previous chat for the two questionnaires we're going over tonight, and then the last one's tonight. The details on, this, uh, on these are on the project website. You also can go back and watch recordings of the previously um, conducted chats on the website. Okay, so with that, I am going to pull up a different screen. We're actually going to take a look at the um, landing page for the community chats um, and all of the questionnaires. So if you can see on my screen here, just got my Google browser up, you can just type in Engage 2045. You might want to type in James City County. I think I've typed this in so many times it knows exactly where to go. <laughs> but um, you just click here and what will come up is the project website. You've got this yellow box here for community chats and questionnaires. This pop up, you can click on learn more. It's a quick handy little way there. And this is the landing page for everything related to round three engagement, the community chats and questionnaires. So you can see the questionnaires are listed here. Um, if you know someone that doesn't have online access but might want to um, fill out a paper version of the questionnaire, there's a listing of those locations here on the website. Um, the chats are listed here and you can watch recordings of the previously conducted chats and there's some other information including a recently um, uh, conducted podcast on this. And I'm going to hand it off to Tammy to talk a little bit more about some of the other information that's available to folks that are interested in, in learning about 
um, background information to help inform you. Thank you, Leanne. Well, certainly our hope is that your participation in tonight's chat will provide you with all of the information you need to answer the questionnaires comfortably. But for those of you who might still have questions or want to dive more deeply into any particular topic that uh, is covered in our effort, uh, I'd like to highlight a special feature that we've created for you on the landing page and on the website. So if you go to your landing page uh, where Leanne has uh, highlighting with her cursor now, we have recorded presentations on different topics ranging from community character or economic development or uh, an environment. And those links are all YouTube videos um, where we've had planning commission working group presentations uh, giving key planning influences, uh, historical statistics, uh, various um, policy descriptions, uh, the things that we've been doing and the things that we're thinking about doing in the future in each of those topic areas. Uh, so we hope that you might uh, be inspired to explore uh, more about those topics from there. Um, each one is about a 15 to 25 minute presentation. You can skip through at your own pace. And it also describes some of the community guidance that we've received to date, uh, which I think is a really helpful portion of it. The Planning Commission Working Group, uh, who has been working on the technical updates to the comprehensive plan, uh, comprised of planning commissioners and a citizen member from our community participation team, they found those videos to be a very good foundation for talking about what's been happening in our community and what changes might be desired in the coming months. And we hope they're a useful resource to you too. Uh, there is, I'll make a plug, uh, just as an aside, a podcast uh, that Leanne and Vlad did with our very own Renee Dahlman, and also a short video at the bottom uh, that tells you a little bit more about the process. So with that, I'll turn it over to Vlad, who's gonna talk a bit more about our questionnaires. Thank you, Tammy. Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. And it's great to see that uh, a lot of people were interested in the future of the county because that's what this is about. Um, so I'm going to walk you through these questionnaires and keep in mind that tonight's meeting is really to get you informed, uh, to answer your questions, and so that you can answer these surveys, these questionnaires, uh, in a very thoughtful, informed way. And I'm back at the kind of uh, landing page when you go to the uh, community chats for Engage 2045. And you can see the three questionnaires. I'm just going to click on two of them. Um, certainly, if you haven't taken the policies and actions questionnaire yet, go back and do that. But I just want to show you what this will look like when you click on the character design guidelines questionnaire. And the purpose of this questionnaire is part of this comprehensive plan is going to be asking what your community should look like in the future. Uh, so this has some uh, very fun interactive graphics and uh, images in this MetroQuest platform. It'll ask you a series of questions based on images and ask you kind of to uh, pick or, or rank those images. It does take a minute to load all of these because of all the graphics, but be patient with it. You can do it on your cell phone or on the computer. Um, and we will go through this survey in more detail in a couple of minutes in the breakout group. So I won't uh, focus on that, but you'll be able to walk through it. Uh, the second one is the land use uh, map questionnaire. And the purpose of this questionnaire is there are some proposed changes to the future land use map. Um, and we want to get your thoughts on each of these 27 um, uh, land use changes. We'll go through in the small groups what each one of these are, but just to orient you, there's a map with all 27 of them. They're all listed here. You click on one, you get a map of it uh, and some descriptions about what the current land use is, what's proposed. And then you also have this uh, click to provide comment that takes you to a different screen where you can really give more open-ended comments and uh, tell, tell us if you think this is keeping with your vision for the county. So again, we'll go over those in greater detail, but I wanna turn it back to uh, Leanne for another poll. 
Great, thanks, Vlad. So before we, um, as, as Vlad mentioned, we're gonna be breaking out into small groups here in just a moment um, so that we can give you all a chance to ask us some questions. Um, before we do that, we wanted to get a sense of the topics that you're most interested in. Um, so the, the two topics that we've got listed here tonight are use of land in the community or design of the community. And, and this will help um, guide us as we um, move into our small group discussion. So if you could click on which of those you are most interested in. And then when Alex sees that we've got everybody um, filling out their poll, then he'll show us the response there and we can see what everybody's got on their minds tonight. When we do go into the small groups, um, that is n there's nothing that you have to do as a participant. Um, our, our friend Alex, who's doing all of the magic through Zoom, will um, we'll put you into your small group. You don't have to have to do anything except for just ride ride the wave um, as you um, go into your small group. You will be able to unmute when you get in your small group. So we do encourage you to, to um, share your thoughts and opinions during that time. Okay, so 100% of folks that participating tonight want to um, learn more about use of land in the community and about a quarter of folks are interested in design. So that's very helpful that we know that the, the land use applications are probably of interest to a lot of, of people tonight. So thank you for doing that. I'm gonna share one last quick slide before we go over to our small groups, just so everybody's clear about what we're doing. So when we're in our small group, again, you're going to be merged to that here in just a moment. And Vlad and I are going to be the facilitators. We'll have two small groups and we're going to walk you through the details of the questionnaires. And that's your opportunity to ask any questions that you have as we walk through those. You can ask questions about the questionnaire itself, the planning process, or some other related topic. We're happy to take those. Um, one thing we do want to do is make sure that we're all um, learning the same um, information and in tonight. So what we'll do in the small group is we're going to identify questions um, that you all share and we're going to put those on a list and we're going to um, bring those to our full Q&A session where we come back after our small group. So we may not be answering your question directly in our small group, but we're going to make sure you get it answered when we come um, after our small group and our full group discussion. So uh, again, when we leave the small group, the project team will meet back up and we'll take that list of questions you provided to us in small group and we'll respond to those questions. And if time permits, you're welcome to ask additional questions through the chat when we're back um, all together again. So I'm going to stop sharing there. And Alex, if you want to whisk us away to our two small groups, I think we're ready to go. The second category are the county initiated land use application changes. And these are the uh, applications that the county has initiated based on public input um, for a change. And the majority of these properties are owned by the county, although there are some applications that are privately owned. And the third category are the county initiated planning commission working group applications. And this is the category of um, applications that are being explored based on public input and based on the planning commission working group who selected them for review and consideration. So we're gonna start with the first category and Tammy will ask you if we've had any questions um, that are particular to one of these three. And Tammy, I believe you might be muted unless my computer is cutting out, which is always possible. No, no. I think um, what I'm understanding is that uh, some of this may have been covered in the small groups, but mm -hmm. um, we wanted to take a deeper dive on any that people uh, wanted to, and I wasn't seeing any uh, particular to the first three applications, if I'm uh, understanding that correctly. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. So would we uh, go ahead and move on to the next category and see if there's been any questions? All right, Tom, would you like to give an overview on the uh, county initiated applications? Tom, I believe you also might be muted. Um, go I'm ahead. good now. <laughs> um, like you, you just say, these are the county initiated ones uh, for land use 20 LU 20 0004. Uh, this is a parcel that's located between Norge Elementary and along Richmond Road. Uh, this one is just to correct 
uh, a previous uh, designation where it was designated as a state, federal, and county use property when it's actually a private property. Um, we can move on to number five. This Sorry to interrupt, but, um, yeah. uh, and please correct me if I'm uh, off the track, but um, we did go through these in the small groups too. So I don't know if you need to go through all of them in detail. Gotcha. Thank you, Vlad. I guess I should ask Tammy if we had any questions about this category um, that Tom could weigh in on or if we should move on to the third category. Sorry about that. Thanks, Thomas. Um, I'm looking at the uh, list of questions and I don't see any uh, specific to ones in this category. I do see some general questions from uh, Joanna and Amanda that we will get to um, a, a little bit later. Those are definitely um, ones that I think we will want to cover. Um, but as far as specific ones to these applications, I don't see any in this category. All right, well, that brings us to door number three, which are the Planning Commission Working Group County Initiated Applications. And Tammy, I'll ask you the same question. Did we have any uh, particular applications that folks were interested in? Yes, um, there is a question about uh, land use application 20-25, uh, several of them, in fact. Um, how do concerned citizens stop this application from happening? And then another one, uh, and I can restate them later, but uh, the property has a cemetery. How can a townhouse site affect this area and how can the cemetery be preserved? Great, well, great questions. I think in response to the first one, I do wanna reiterate that the county staff is reviewing this because it's at the exploratory stage. And so I would encourage anybody who's interested in the outcome of this property, uh, please fill out the land use questionnaire uh, please give comments on all the applications that you're interested in. And there's a text box in there where you can um, fill out your specific thoughts. And so there's this drop down menu that lets you pick the application, uh, which would be 25. You can say whether or not this is in keeping with the vision for the county and then give those specific comments um, in that box that's located there. Uh, I will say that for Land use 20 25. This is uh, off of Waltrip Lane. It's located adjacent to the Williamsburg Winery as well as the airport. And Lake Powell Road is probably the major road that's closest to it. Um, and uh, the application itself, the current land use is low density residential, uh, but this is being explored as a potential change to moderate or high density residential. And um, like I said, if there's, if there's, if you want to make sure that you can get your comments recorded, please fill out the uh, questionnaire and, and be sure to follow our web page and, and uh, subscribe to our newsletter uh, for updates on the process. So Thomas, uh, one question that was posed, uh, and I think it was related to this one, is a question about moderate to high. What does that mean in terms of number of people associated with it and perhaps also impacts from cars or traffic? Sure, so in the, uh, in the comprehensive plan, there are different suggested densities that are based on the land use designations. And so for the moderate density, uh, the moderate residential density description right now, I believe the unit range that's recommended is four to 12 units. And so in the future, if this land use were changed and there were a proposal that came in, say a rezoning or something like that, uh, the number of units that were proposed would be weighed against that recommended density within the description. Now, of course, at that stage, there would be a more detailed plan and impacts to the roads. You're cutting and, out, Thomas, I'm sorry. Oh, yep, sorry about that. Um, and let me know if I recap too much, but essentially there's a recommended unit density ranges within each designation. And currently the moderate density residential description is for four to 12 units per acre. And so if it were to be adopted, that would be uh, what was recommended and would help guide some of the decision-making process for a rezoning or an SUP. May I ask a question, please? In regards to the Lake Powell Road uh, proposal, 
a lot of us in this area are worried about the traffic. This is a thin road. It's a dead end road. How, how do y'all look at the outcome of the traffic, the road maintenance and everything in regards to this proposal? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, a great question. And part of the comp plan update process, the consultant team is providing uh, congestion maps for major roadways within the, within the county. Um, those are being prepared. And so that's a reference point for us where we would look at a road like Lake Powell Road or another major road and see what the current congestion level is, as well as what the anticipated congestion level would be in the year 2045 under the scenario that we're considering. So that would be the reference point that we would look at um, during this process. Uh, we also look at any staff reports that have been done for proposals adjacent to that road to glean as much information as we can to see what the impact would be for the long term. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to revisit the uh, your answer there concerning mid to high residential density. You said four to 12 units. That's four to 12 units of apartments, single family dwellings on what acreage? So the recommended density range is four to 12 units per acre. The way that that's actually um, articulated on the site would depend on what the applicant wanted to propose. So for unit calculation, we look at the total units that are being proposed. Um, the actual site layout would depend on what the applicant was putting forward. And this is separate from any sort of application that's been submitted uh, by a property owner. This is just looking at the long-term policy. So right now, you, do you have any of those plans for those where you're looking to go uh, moderate to high, for example, the uh, the one on LU 20 0023, uh, which, you know, is currently sitting at uh, 179.2 acres. And, you know, it, it's moderate to high density. If moderate set at four to 12, what's high density? So under the um, current unit density range, 12 would be the highest possible under the, excuse me, under the moderate uh, designation. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question, but that would be the higher end of the range that's currently adopted for the plan. Okay, and do you, do you guys have the plans for what is going into those areas? Uh, we, we do not, that's a, a great question. So this is a, um, a policy consideration where we're looking at um, the site and then looking at the land use designation to see what could go there if it were adopted. But this is not in response to a specific site plan that's being submitted. That's sort of a, a current planning um, issue that's separate from the land use policy planning process, which is what we're in now. Okay. Thomas, I think uh, one question that um, might be helpful uh, to answer on behalf of all of these land use applications, if you haven't already covered it, and I have to apologize, my audio went out there for a little bit, is does a change on the land use map uh, mean that there's a change in the zoning of the property? And what's the process that that would go through to go from idea to development? Yeah, that's a great question. And there's a difference between the recommended land use and the current zoning designation of the property. So the, the land use designation is looking out uh, 20 years in the future um, to see what could be possible, whereas the zoning is what the property is currently uh, permitting now. Um, so changing the land use designation does not change the zoning, which means if your property, for example, um, was zoned for agricultural use, but was designated for moderate density residential, that doesn't mean that you could come in with a development plan to build a big subdivision. You would still have to go through the legislative process, which would be rezoning your property. And of course, there's a public hearing process that that goes through, or you go to the Planning Commission and the Board of Supervisors. So in short, changing the land use designation doesn't change the zoning. There's still a separate process that uh, encourages and requires you know, public engagement to make sure that people understand what's being proposed. I saw an earlier question um, that we 
touched upon briefly that may not have um, been answered, but would I think fit in well here. If uh, the property has a cemetery, for instance, mm -hmm. um, how would a townhouse site affect this area and how uh, can the cemetery be preserved? Yes, that's a, a great question. And I, I believe that Virginia State Code actually requires for surveys of the property to show existing cemeteries. Um, so if there is one established and a surveyor went out in the field, um, they would have to show that on the plat. That's certainly something that planning staff would look at as part of an application to make sure that you know a cemetery, whether that's a family cemetery or an old burial site, you know, if that information was put forward, we would make sure that um, within the constraints of the law, it wouldn't be built on. So that's a good question and something that we would pay attention to at the current planning stage. During a rezoning or a site plan, for instance, as opposed to at the land use application. Oh, yes. And that's also information we would look at if a rezoning or a special use permit were submitted. Um, if there were any cemeteries that are on site that have been established, for sure. Okay. And I think there was uh, one other question that might relate. Um, people were uh, thinking about moderate to high density and what that might mean in terms of number of people associated. I think um, that you answered that, but as a comparison point, uh, they were wondering what board's colony density might be. And for that, I'll ask Ellen to chime in. Uh, I know we don't have all of the figures for all of the different developments of the county in front of us, but Ellen, would you help us out there? Um, sure, yes. As Tammy just mentioned, um, I don't have the exact figure, uh, but I believe it's in the two dwelling units per acre range or less. So it's, it's a, a lower density development overall. And I, I think that might conclude uh, the questions that I saw on this particular application. There are different comments uh, that we can see, uh, but I know there are some other applications that you might want to highlight, Thomas. Uh, anything near News Road, for instance? Certainly, yes. Uh, this is a Planning Commission working group initiated application and the property is uh, currently designated for low density residential. And the proposal here would be to go to a moderate slash high density residential. And I'll stop there. I don't know if we have any specific questions about News Road or uh, be happy to share any information at this point. Well, currently right now, News Road's a two lane road. Uh, and if you look on the other side of Forts Colony, Long Hill was a two lane road, now going to a four lane road. Uh, a lot of construction there. You would end up with the same thing coming off of Centerville all the way up to Monticello. So, um, you know, Ford's Colony currently sitting at a low density. Uh, you're looking to put a 179 acre piece into a mid to high density up to four, you know, four to 12. Uh, Powhatan right you know, down from it is currently sitting, I think, probably at a you know, four, not a two. Uh, incrementally, you know, putting something like that in that large parcel is going to you know, impact not only the, the traffic on News Road, uh, but the, uh, the expansion of News, News Road. Uh, as well as, uh, you know, traffic for everybody in and out, uh, meaning stoplights and everything else. So, I'm, you know, the, the question was asked earlier, uh, you know, it's not just an impact on how many houses you're putting on there, but the whole infrastructure of the area. Uh, how many schools are going to be added for that amount of population? Where is the emergency services going to go into? Uh, you know, all of those things come into factor and, you know, we're seeing a huge growth in this, in this area uh, where previously it wasn't that bad. Right. And I know we're looking 20 years down the road, you know, out to 2045, but uh, incrementally, uh, we've already got water issues, okay. uh, you know, in the county. 
Uh, there was just you know a recent uh, piece that we talked about the water issues within the county uh, and and issues of York County, which is right you know building uh, right on our edge, doing you know high density stuff. So um, you know, our concerns are just what you know what really are we trying to do here? Are we trying to bulk ourselves up or are we trying to do something uh, with the land? Gotcha. Sammy, you might be on mute again. I will learn one of these days. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think there are a number of comments in the chat that are echoing uh, that general theme of concern about the uh, amount of uh, people that might be generated from a particular development and Beyond that, uh, the impacts that might be generated to the roads, to the schools, to public facilities, and so on. And I'd invite um, Thomas Yu to talk a little bit about uh, what we do during our land use application review. And um, Vlad, if you wanted to chime in at all about, you know, how that fits into the scenario planning work that we did and uh, the the, the um, overall vision that we're testing for the for the county. Sure, I, I'd be happy to kick things off if that's all right with Vlad, but um, as part of the application review, we do transmit uh, each application that's being explored out to agencies for review and comment. So that includes um, JCSA, that includes our stormwater division, uh, that also includes the Virginia Department of Transportation, and they all give um, in, uh, comments on what they see at this level to be the potential impacts um, that are there. And I'll leave the, the scenario planning and that piece up to Vlad, but they've also, the consultants have provided some helpful uh, mapping on expected congestion that helps give, you know, a bit of a, a picture of what traffic could look like uh, in that long-term timeframe. So we, we are looking at comments from review agencies to help get a better sense of what the impacts could be. And Vlad, I'll turn it over to you to talk about uh, your side of things. Yeah, thanks, Thomas. I mentioned this in our small group, but um, the, the county went through a scenario planning process and we did some computer models to look at different ways that the county could um, grow or develop in 25 years. And uh, we showed all the results to the public through a series of these questionnaires and got input on them uh, a few months ago. And some of these county initiated uh, land use applications are based on that public input we got on which scenario was preferred. Um, kind of in a, in a nutshell, uh, what people preferred was not a continuation of current trends, which is um, growth in a more dispersed fashion, more growth in the rural lands, for example. And what they did prefer was more compact growth, um, less kind of sprawl into rural areas. And um, so that's a, you know, parcel by parcel results of some of these. And then we also did look at, as uh, Thomas mentioned, the traffic impact, the fiscal impact on the county. Um, and one of the comments I noticed was, did you look at it during COVID times? So the answer to that is no, this was a, a traffic model that looked at kind of current conditions as of a year or so ago, and then projected conditions 25 years from now. Uh, so that data is being looked at by the county staff as part of considering each of these land use applications. Um, if that helps to give you some background. Now, this is Leigh Ann here. Just wanted to mention that the public engagement summaries for all the previous activities of Engage 2045, you can find under the Share Your Ideas public engagement summaries. I think we might have one more question uh, related to this particular application, which as Alex had noted in the chat is uh, application 20-23 uh, owned by uh, SWR Hockaday LLC and McMurrin. Um, it was, uh, well, maybe that was the question, which one this was uh, specifically and who owns it. So. I'm hoping that that does cover everything. 
There was yeah. um, there was one question we got in our small group that um, Tammy that that was related to between once the questionnaires are um, completed and wrapped up on February 21st and the public hearing date, what are the opportunities to be providing feedback on various aspects of the plan? That might be something to, to share on opportunities through the Planning Commission Working Group. Thank you. Uh, Thomas, do you want to take that one as well? And I don't want anyone to uh, feel like we've overlooked other questions. I think there are some general ones and one about Anderson's Corner that we'll come back to after this process question for Thomas. And to add that question before Thomas speaks, it's really about how are the citizens notified after this process of any potential land use change or anything that may happen after that. Thank you, Christy. I appreciate it. And another great question. So the um, the best place to look would be the Engage 2045 website and to subscribe to the newsletter that would keep you updated on the process. Um, the planning staff's recommendations on these applications are going to be presented to the Planning Commission Working Group and will be going to the board as well. And those uh, meetings are available. Um, they're on YouTube and um, they're available for the public to, to watch. Um, the other side of it is that we will be running legal advertisements in the paper when it comes time to actually consider um, changing the land use map um, and that would be something to look at for as well. And uh, I'll stop there and see if, if Tammy or anyone, anyone else knows of some great resources that perhaps I'm overlooking. I think a start to that, uh, just to supplement a little of what Thomas was talking about is that we have a very detailed Planning Commission Working Group uh, website page here that um, allows citizens to look at all of the materials that we are presenting for uh, the Planning Commission Working Group's consideration. Uh, Leanne, if you could scroll to the top, uh, you can see that there are all of our meeting dates are uh, put forth there and we will add more um, as we move into um, later months. Uh, I know that land use applications will be the focus of our two meetings in March. And um, all the materials will be posted here. Um, Leanne, if you could scroll down a little bit. Uh, so each meeting uh, you can see has uh, everything from a memo to an agenda to reports for each topical area. Uh, so that's where you can go to read more and prepare for a meeting. Uh, there's also um, the fact that we are um, in these COVID times, uh, holding these meetings virtually, but we're still um, encouraging public comment. And that is collected via email or recorded phone call um, up to the day of the meeting. And the meetings are televised and also uh, streamed live on uh, YouTube. So you can um, participate by sharing your comments ahead of time and you can also watch the meeting um, if that agenda interests you. There was um, a, a couple of comments in the chat here regarding the importance of all of the topics that we've been discussing tonight and making sure that there's adequate um, public input into making those decisions. And that, that seems very relevant and and there was a suggestion that we need to, to um, you know, that the community chat is a great opportunity, but that's, it shouldn't end there. And we totally agree and just wanted to reiterate that the three questionnaires that are available through um, the landing page here are the main opportunities for providing feedback during this process. So we highly encourage you to make sure and complete those three um, questionnaires and to invite your family, friends, neighbors, colleagues, anyone who cares about the future of this county to complete those questionnaires because that's how we're 
um, during during the pandemic. That's uh, you know, unfortunately, we we aren't hosting live in person meetings, but we do want to make sure we get as many people to fill these out, and we also have paper copies available for those that are um, maybe not don't have internet access or would prefer to do it on paper. I mean, I think that's a good opportunity um, to highlight from from you uh, and, and Vlad and Thomas and. We'll start with Thomas since it's very oriented toward land use applications of how uh, these comments will be used. Um, so if a citizen makes a comment on this questionnaire for a particular application, what do we do with it? Um, how does the planning commission working group get wind of what citizens are saying about those applications? Yes, the um, all of the comments that come through the questionnaire and that we're receiving are recorded um, and they're part of the record that's going to be presented to the Planning Commission Working Group so that they're aware exactly of what the public has weighed in about this. Um, as I said earlier, these are applications that we're exploring and the thing that we really, really desire is to have lots of public input to help shape the, uh, the public decision making process. So the comments are recorded and then they'll be um, presented to the working group um, and also I believe included when they're presented to the to the board for their consideration as well. So we um, just to to be um, make sure this point doesn't get lost to all the citizens, uh, you know, those public comments are appended to the um, staff reports that go forward to each decision-making body. Um, and Leanne, I might just invite you to uh, follow up with a little more information about how we um, summarize public engagement and how we uh, use it in this process. Yeah, definitely. So um, I pull, you may have noticed earlier on the um, call, I pulled up this share your ideas, public engagement summaries um, page here. So if you're, interested in learning more about what um, we have accomplished through the two previous rounds of public engagement, including um, the citizen survey that was conducted in 2019, which maybe some of you were part of that, um, were one of the participants of that survey. All of that information is documented here through various reports. And um, James City County's um, Planning Commission Working Group and Community Participation Team are really important in and um, taking a look at um, all of that information, particularly the community participation team is focused on um, putting the strategy together for how we're gonna collect information and thinking very um, strategically about the questions that we ask and the way that we ask them. And then once we conduct the engagement and we put together the reports that you see on the page here, um, that information is then provided um, to the Planning Commission Working Group. We've also been briefing the Board of Supervisors along the way so that they're plugged into the process and, and how it's moving forward. And the Planning Commission Working Group in particular is going to be taking a close look at the outcomes um, of this engagement as they make their recommendations to the board in terms of different decisions that have to be made with respect to land use or, or housing or economic development, whatever the topic is. Um, it's a comprehensive plan, so we're covering a lot of different topics, but um, that information is very much guiding this process um, throughout, um, you know, I mentioned earlier that we're, we're building on um, each previous phase of engagement and what we've learned. Um, to that extent, we're still looking back at um, citizen survey results. We're looking at the five public input priorities that were established in round one. So we are definitely, um, and when I say we, I'm speaking kind of collectively for the whole project team, planning commission working group um, that are working on this project, um, are, are, are continuing to look back at those public engagement um, uh, feedback points that have been provided earlier in the process to make sure that there's consistency across the board. Um, so I think, uh, does that help explain a little bit more, Tammy, kind of how that engagement will be used? Yes, thank you. Um, I know that uh, there are some great comments being made in the chat. And one suggestion was to um, put our announcements of our meeting uh, on social media. 
Um, and we will try to do that. That's a great idea. Uh, we have been using it heavily to promote the chats and the questionnaires, and uh, you know, we will explore using that for the meetings that are of high interest to citizens uh, for these land use applications. Um, I think there are some more process questions that we could come back to, but I think Joanna has been waiting uh, in the wings for a bit to talk about and listen to Thomas to more details regarding anything up in the Anderson's Corner area. Would you be able to show us an application if there are any up in that area? Certainly. And let me uh, pull up my spreadsheet here and I can give Leanne, the case number, we do have a um, initiated application that is considering um, modifying the size of Anderson's Corner. I believe that's 20-0019, if Leanne wants to flip on over there. And essentially, this is a proposal that would consider bringing in uh, these three parcels up here into the Anderson's Corner mixed use area. And there's also two parcels farther to the south that are also being considered. Um, there's not a specific development proposal that goes along with these changes. It's simply looking at these parcels to see um, if based on the public input themes that we've received so far, uh, expanding the mixed use area to cover more acreage would fit in with what the public has expressed. So I, I think the question might have been specific to, you know, is there a specific plan in that area? Um, the answer is no, this is just considering uh, broadening Anderson's Corners designation to include more property for the future. Joanne, I hope that answered your question. And if you had any follow-up ones or other people did, uh, we'll be monitoring the chat. Um, I think uh, getting back to some general questions, um, there was uh, a question, are infrastructure improvements included in these proposals? And Thomas, I think that might be a good opportunity to talk about, again, the difference between uh, land use applications and rezonings and the level of detail we get into with each of those and what the concrete outcomes might be. Absolutely. So for a land use application, we are looking at the long term um, designation for that area. And so, as I mentioned earlier, we, we do have the consultants providing the congestion maps for currently within the county and then what's projected looking out in the future. But when it comes to, for example, a traffic study or looking at the specific improvements that would need to be put in place um, for a land use change, that's really something that would come into play if there were a rezoning on the property. You know, as part of our rezoning process, and applicants required to provide information on trip generation to show just how many cars would be produced um, by that proposal. And then they would, the applicant hopefully would show, well, here's how we think we could address that problem based on the engineering that we've had done and based on um, the information that we have available. So really a, a, that level of detail is something that certainly would be addressed at the rezoning stage but at the land use application level, we are looking more broadly at the total transportation networks within the county. There was another uh, general question about um, are our opinions on the questionnaires really taken into consideration about the developer's money? Um, and I know uh, there was a follow-up uh, question to that. Uh, will the board consider citizen desires ahead of developer money. And Leanna, I might um, just ask you to help us uh, think about that in terms of how um, the Planning Commission Working Group and the Board of Supervisors have responded to public comment uh, thus far in terms of hearing about the summaries and um, uh, uh, you know the broader ways in which decision-making occurs. Yeah, definitely. So um, what I can say is that um, the first off, I'll, I'll mention that what we learned through the citizen survey and through the um, round one public engagement, um, where we established the five public input priorities, um, what we learned is that while 
we were getting a lot of excellent feedback from the community. Um, a lot of the issues that people were raising were consistent with the policy direction from the previous plan. So we don't anticipate that this planning effort is going to significantly change James City County as a community um, and the direction that it's been following in the past. Um, that being said, there are some specific areas that um, we've identified through the last two rounds of engagement and the citizen survey that are opportunities for a closer look and maybe refining existing policy direction and specific actions to be taken. Um, I think that what we have seen from the Planning Commission Working Group and the board is this um, close um, look at what the public is saying and what the themes are. When we say themes, we mean, you know, what are multiple people um, saying, um, you know, where's their consensus that's being built around particular um, insights or ideas or aspirations for the county. And we continue to look back at those themes and, and we now call them public input priorities that, again, that were established within round one. And those are really kind of the marching orders that the Planning Commission Working Group is, is looking at, um, is using to guide their effort um, in making decisions. So I would very much say that um, your inputs are very important. They count, they matter, and people are actually looking at your inputs. And so that's why we're, we're definitely encouraging you to complete the three questionnaires um, and also invite your friends, neighbors, colleagues, anyone that cares about the future of the county to do so as well, because we are using that information. Um, it's not just sitting in a report, it's actively being used. If you go look at one of those um, or several of the meetings that the Planning Commission Working Group um, have linked from the project website, you'll you'll um, see the recordings of those meetings that there are many opportunities where they're going back and looking at the public um, findings from these rounds of engagement um, as guidance for thinking through the choices that they have to make. Oh, and I think you might be muted. Thank you. <laughs> um, I thought I'd just take the opportunity to uh, keep you on the hook here for a question that was um, not so centered necessarily on land use applications. I think it was a broader question about um, how much of a representative sample are these questionnaires and, and how are we understanding uh, who these, uh, who, who's offering comments to the, to the Planning Commission Working Group, to staff, to the Board of Supervisors? That's a great question. So I'm going to start off with kind of talking again about the 2019 citizen survey. That's kind of, that's our benchmark to some degree. Now we didn't ask the same questions in that survey that we're asking in this round three. However, we did cover a broad array of topics and that was a statistically significant survey that was um, prepared for the county. And so we have, you know, strong um, confidence in the results that we got from that and that was very representative of the um, county's population. For the other rounds of engagement that we've conducted during this process, we do ask people to provide um, specific information about themselves and I'm just going to click over to the MetroQuest survey here. You may have seen this when you were looking at it in the small groups. We do ask specific questions about um, age, race, um, ethnicity, gender, um, and some other information about the individual participants. We track that across all of our, our rounds of engagement. And then we compare those numbers to uh, numbers that come through the Census Bureau through the American Community Survey so that we know are the people, we know what the um, comparison is between who we're hearing from and what the actual makeup of the community is along those lines. So we are reporting out um, on those statistics and we identify places that we are areas that we might need to do some additional um, engagement to try to reach communities that maybe aren't um, fully represented. Um, so that is something that we're trying to track and um, make sure that we are um, you know, being clear about who we are hearing from, again, with that um, citizen survey at the front of the process being really being our benchmark in terms of knowing that we have statistically significant data that we are being guided by. I would uh, just add in that uh, that has certainly been the case from 
our citizen survey uh, in 2019, the one that kicked this whole process off, uh, to what we've conducted in round one, round two, and now with round three in terms of this uh, character design questionnaire um, and also the policies and action questionnaire. The exception is the uh, commenting form for the future land use map uh, because that is so individualistic um, and, uh, uh, you know, can be very specific to a particular area and the neighbors and uh, so on. Uh, we did not collect that sort of information uh, for each uh, comment uh, on land use applications. Uh, so uh, that I just wanted to note that as a as a slight deviation from the remainder, but uh, certainly the total statistics from round three uh, will be something that we'll be comparing uh, to the demographics of the county. I see another question. Um, the News Road Project, Thomas, is one that is definitely on the minds of our participants tonight. Uh, the question is, in reference to the News Road Project, is it true that Fry Properties has already filed a plan for use of that parcel? Is that what is driving the land use change? And Thomas, I don't know if, if you are uh, the uh, correct person, so please feel free to pass that along if there's another staff member who's working on that particular one. Uh, sure. So I'm not familiar with uh, Fry Properties. I will say that the um, the reason for this parcel being selected was because of uh, the difference between this and the scenario B mapping. Um, so this property was selected for that reason. It wasn't because of a specific development plan that had been submitted to the county. There may be a site plan that is, is currently under review, and I can certainly check on that, but that wasn't the impetus for exploring this as a land use change. I can uh, chime in for a second. Um, there is no uh, site plan in yet or uh, rezoning application or anything to that effect yet. Uh, Fry Properties uh, has been um, submitting conceptual plans for this property to see if uh, their proposal could be uh, worked into the current land use, um, but they did not, this is not one of the owner initiated applications um, where they submitted it. Okay. Well, thank you for um, those who have been able to participate thus far and listen. I, I know that uh, some of you have had to drop off and yet I know there are about two more questions that uh, we had and uh, generated from your previous discussions in the community uh, chat small groups. Um, Vlad, one of them had been posed to you and you may have answered it in your small group, but it might be helpful in this larger group. Um, given the multiple choice options in the character design guidelines questionnaire in the MetroQuest format, uh, how do we express alternative views? Yes, exactly. We, we talked about that a little bit in the small group and um, we showed the kind of um, uh, tell us why button, uh, which is in all the windows. And that's an opportunity for folks to paint a picture in words. Um, I don't know that you can add an image there, but uh, if you think that none of these represents your vision for the future of the county, uh, tell us why or, or describe what that would be. And these really are helpful. I, I made the point in the small group too that um, consultant theme is, is using this to try to craft some character design guidelines. Uh, Planning Commission Working Group will definitely be looking at that and, and shaping it into something that could guide future development in the county. Can't hear you, Tim. Uh, switching back to, thank you, uh, the land use applications and the process in general. Um, I think uh, scrolling through my questions, uh, there was a, a question about how do we go back and look at these applications at our leisure, or how do we look at some sort of spreadsheet that might tell us more information about each of the applications and the pertinent details for them? Uh, Thomas, do you think you could field that one for us? 
Sure. Yeah, that's a, another great question. And um, the Planning Commission Working Group website, which I believe that's where the agendas are posted um, for each of the meetings. Uh, if you were to go back to the January meeting um, for January, I believe it was the 5th, um, might have been the 6th, there's actually the spreadsheet uploaded there that showed the uh, applications that were being considered by the um, by the working group. And from that, they selected what we're currently reviewing. I do want to make a plug for our permit link website as well, um, which I don't think we need to pull up right now because uh, the agenda site is probably the best resource, but on Permitlink, we do have the option to pull up each land use application um, and get a sense of which parcels are being considered. But for the fullest detail, you'd wanna pull up the uh, agenda meetings um, where the topic was land use, and you can look in detail at, at each of the proposals. So in this particular instance, uh, we might scroll down. Uh, there are uh, past meetings where this has come up. Um, and on the left bar, it would be, right, I think you mentioned one in January, Thomas? Uh, I believe so. If you keep scrolling down, um, unless I'm mixing up my dates, yep. So you'd want to click on, um, I believe it would be the attachment, keep scrolling down. I believe it's 2.8. Um, you click on that, a PDF will pop up. It's a it's a pretty big packet, so it might take a minute to load. <laughs> but there's lots of great info in there. So and if you get sure. if you get the right one here, I'll copy this URL and post it in the chat for folks that might want to access this. Yeah, that'd be great. And as a final question, um, I, then I'll we'll open it up uh, as time permits. Um, just an application a question of how uh, citizens will be notified of changes once this process is over. That is an excellent question. Um, I know that the adopted land use map would show the actual changes that were approved after going through the public hearing process. Um, but I might defer to Tammy or to Ellen on the call if they have a better sense of um, how that notification is going to occur after the approval. And if I may, this is the spreadsheet right there that Leanne just passed um, that has the uh, applications detailed there. And you'd have to zoom in quite a bit to get all that information. Um, but that's laying out the rationale and the, um, the actual proposed change, as well as some property information for each case. If I could. Just add, um, once the materials are posted for the meetings in March, um, there would be updated information that would be um, in addition to what, what uh, you were just able to view there. So we, we're building along the way uh, the information that we are collecting on each of the land use applications and uh, that the Planning Commission Working Group, the Planning Commission and the Board of Supervisors will use to make their decisions and, and uh, that includes public comment. And um, as Thomas mentioned earlier, I think the only thing I'd add to uh, the excellent answer he gave is that um, we do have uh, towards the end of the process, uh, public hearings and in preparation for those public hearings with the Planning Commission and Board for their, their final actions, uh, we advertise that in the newspaper uh, there are more formal opportunities for public comment. And then uh, once the decisions are made, uh, that is reflected on our land use map that will be posted to our website. And uh, we will probably have a bit of a, uh, an announcement on social media regarding uh, the decisions that were made uh, or the, the fact that the comprehensive plan was adopted, uh, fingers crossed. Uh, that, that all goes smoothly and reflects every great um, uh, discussion that we're having. Um, there will also be notifications sent to the property owners of uh, those properties that have been uh, had a land use change uh, made to it. Um, I think that's probably the best uh, uh, encapsulation of what happens at the very end of the process.
see, and I'm looking at the chat, and I'm not seeing any other comments. And I know that um, I think we tried to touch upon every one in the small group. Um, is there anything else that we might want to have Thomas cover as far as uh, group three applications, or uh, do you think we might want to move on to the next portion of our meeting? Yeah, I'm. It, it, we are. We're here to answer your questions. So if other folks have additional questions, I'm happy to respond to those. Um, I know that we've. We kept you a little bit late and I'm hoping that was because this was good for you to, to learn and, and uh, um, get some additional feedback on some of the questions that you have and really appreciate everybody that has been participating. One of you again will be selected to um, have a, a lovely sweet treat um, at Carrot Tree. So be looking for that in your email. Um, happy to take any questions. Again, if you wanna plug them in the chat as we're rounding um, the meeting out here. Um, just want to reiterate and underscore that these three questionnaires are the way that we are capturing inputs during this round three of engagement. And so we, we while we've had lots of great discussion tonight and we, we are very encouraged to see all of you interested, we want to make sure that you fill out these, um, these questionnaires so that we can um, capture that feedback and, and track it along with the other um, respondents that we're getting. Um, so please, you've got through February 21st. So it's, uh, you know, something that you can do over the next couple of weekends or nights, uh, whatever your schedule permits, we highly encourage you to do that. And also invite your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues to do the same because this is really important. And we are looking at this information uh, to guide the inputs that are, uh, to, excuse me, guide the decisions that are going to generate the, the plan itself. Let's see here. So any last, I think we've got a final short poll, if you all would allow us. Um, and this is really just to help us understand um, if this has been helpful for you or not. Um, so we've got two questions here. This is going to help us in thinking about future engagement activities. Um, so first question, do you feel the session today helped you understand the questionnaires? And then secondly, how did you hear about the chat? We're always wanting to make sure we're using all of the um, uh, channels available to us to spread the word um, and reach as many people as possible. So um, it's helpful for us to, to hear about how you heard about this process and, and how you have um, engaged. So if you could complete that questionnaire, that would be really helpful for us. Um, I know the community participation team has done a lot of work trying to spread the word for, through various means. You might've seen some of the water buses driving around, some of the advertisements on that or over social media. There's been some, some advertising in some of the local newspapers um, and, and other um, means as well. So um, we appreciate your feedback to figure out um, which one of those we're actually reaching people with and how you heard about this. Um, just a final plug again, February 21st, make sure that you complete those um, questionnaires by the 21st. We're really encouraging you to do that. And again, the easiest way to get to this website, um, if you just go to your, start off again here, if you just go to your Google um, or whatever your favorite browser is and type in Engage 2045, James City County, it should pop right up. And then you're gonna get this little yellow window at the bottom. You can click on learn more and it'll take you straight to the landing page so that you've got the, the chats um, that we, like the one we're hosting tonight, you can watch those videos. Most importantly, you've got the links to the questionnaires to complete. And then you have the other information here that Tammy shared with us earlier this evening. So let's see, and, and Alex has posted that link to the chat. If you wanna click on it, um, you'll make a bookmark of it and um, keep it for future and hopefully complete those three questionnaires. So I think we're rounding out our meeting. Happy to take any final questions that anyone might have. Any final questions? Well, thank you so much for joining tonight. Really great questions. Um, it's, it's very helpful. And um, as um, we mentioned at the start, this is a recorded meeting. And so um, you're also helping others in the county learn about um, these 
important land use applications and considerations with respect to community design. So appreciate your time and effort to do that. Um, good, got one question here. Can you fill out the questionnaire more than once? So yes, good question. Um, we would encourage individuals to only complete that questionnaire once. However, we do leave it open knowing that some households have multiple parties that might want to complete that questionnaire, might be using the same device or computer to do so. So um, it's not locked to only one use per device or computer. Uh, but again, we would encourage only um, one individual to complete each of the three questionnaires one time. Great, any final questions? Thank you. We've gotten, um, again, thank you so much for joining in. We really appreciate you um, taking advantage of this. We hope this has been helpful and we appreciate you taking the time to ask your questions so that others can learn in the community as well. So Tammy, any last words before we wrap up tonight? I think you're Goodness gracious, I will learn eventually. Um, <laughs> I just a sincere appreciation to everyone for joining us this evening, uh, giving up your time. We know that everyone is busy and um, we hope that this has been helpful to you. Thank you. Great, great, thank you all.